Mantor Ministries presents the Mantor Guy Podcast. We may talk about football. We could mention bacon. We might reference Rocky movies. We'll probably discuss the Mantor conferences, but we'll definitely talk about how to grow in our walk with God. Here's your host, the Mantor Guy, Jamie Holden. Hey guys, welcome back to the Mantor Guy Podcast. My name is Jamie Holden, and I'm so glad to have you join us this week. On this week's podcast, I want to talk to you about a topic that I'm very passionate about. It is one of the biggest struggles facing Christian men today. So let's jump right in and talk about it together. I'm going to start off by asking a couple questions. Have you ever received a Christmas present in May? How about a birthday present seven months after your birthday? Maybe you received Easter chocolate in November. If you can say yes to any of this, then you too probably had a relative who frequently forgot where they hid a present. My grandma was notorious for this. Almost every year during her spring cleaning, she would come across a gift or a present she had hidden and forgotten about. It's actually kind of funny. We all do this periodically. Recently, my sister Odessa was looking for a suitcase to use for a ministry trip. She found one, and when she opened it, she was surprised to find it filled with winter clothes. I had run out of drawer space and had stored some sweaters that I rarely wear. I mean, hey, I'm a big dude. Sweaters, they make me sweat. And, you know, I kept them in this suitcase, and I had forgotten all about them. One time, Odessa hit it big while spring cleaning. She found a box of her favorite chocolate that she had hid so everyone else didn't eat it. And it had been there for, like, years when she found it. We all tend to hide stuff and forget where it is hidden sometime in our lives. And usually, this isn't really a big deal. However, sometimes we hide things of great value like a key or important documents, and when a time comes that we need them, we panic when we can't find them. Today I want to talk to you about a man who found himself in an awful spot. He and his people found something that never should have been lost. However, his reaction to this should inspire us all today. So let's look in the Bible to see what King Josiah found and how he handled it. King Josiah became king of Judah at the age of 8 years old. That is so young to be made king. I can't think of a single eight-year-old that I would want to be the president of the United States. Josiah's grandfather was Manasseh. He was the worst king in Judah's history. He was a violent, horrible man who destroyed the worship of God. He killed the prophet Isaiah, and he introduced Judah to the most horrendous idolatry that they could ever experience. It's said that blood flowed in the streets from Manasseh's cruelty. However, he eventually, Manasseh repented and returned to God, and he lived out his final days serving God and obeying him. After his death, Manasseh's son took the throne. King Ammon decided to follow the ways of a young Manasseh, and as a result, he was assassinated. And this is why young Josiah was thrust into the throne at the age of eight years old. Josiah never knew about his grandfather Manasseh's evil ways. He only knew Manasseh post-conversion. He followed the path of the repentant Manasseh, and he served God wholeheartedly. 2 Kings 22 tells us that when Josiah was 26 years old, during his 18th year as king, wow, 26 years old, he'd already served 18 years. Anyways, he decided it was time to renovate and repair the temple of God. It had been neglected long enough. He decided it was time to repair it to its former glory, showing to people that the worship of God was paramount to his kingdom. And as the men began to work in the temple, they found something that had been hidden and forgotten about. Allow me to read to you directly from 2 Kings 22, verses 8 to 10. Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the secretary, and I probably butchered both of those names, but anyways, forgive me. I have found the book of the law of the temple of the Lord. He gave it to Shaphan who read it. Then Shephon the secretary went to the king and reported to him, Your officials have paid out the money that was in the temple of the Lord and have entrusted it to the workers and the supervisors of the temple. Then he informed the king, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book. And Shaphan read from it in the presence of the king. Can you believe that? The nation of Judah had actually lost the word of God. The Bible as they knew it at that time was so neglected that it got hidden and lost. I mean, how was this even possible for God's chosen people? How did God's children lose God's word? They had fallen into so much idolatry and sin that they didn't even bother consulting the Bible on how to live. This is so heartbreaking, yet it is so easy to understand. Unfortunately, believers do this all the time. Just listen to these stats. 
Between early 2019 and 2020, the percentage of U.S. adults who say they use the Bible daily dropped from 14% to 9%, according to the State of the Bible 2020 report released by the Barna Group and the American Bible Society. Only 14% of people said they read God's Word daily pre-pandemic. And that is so sad. But it's gone even, even worse since the COVID-19 pandemic. Now only 9% read God's Word daily. The numbers are equally pathetic for believers. A LifeWay research survey found in 2019 that only 32% of Protestant Christians read the Bible daily. 27% read it a few times a week, 12% once a week, and 5% once a month. 12% of Protestant Christians say they never read God's Word. These stats are so sad. They are pitiful numbers for both Christians as well as a nation that claims to be one nation under God. We need to break this trend immediately. We need to make sure we haven't hidden God's word away and forgotten all about it like the nation of Judah did. Guys, we need to understand a few things. Number one, we need to know that Christian men must read God's word. Honestly, it is impossible to live as a strong Christian if you're not reading God's Word. Now, I didn't say you have to read the Bible to be a Christian. Salvation comes through faith in Jesus, and it comes in no other way. But to be a strong Christian, you must read God's Word. Otherwise, you're going to stay weak and defeated. Why? Well, the words in the Bible help us when we face our enemy. When we know what the Bible says and we function in the power of the Holy Spirit, we have the spiritual strength of Captain America. Nothing can defeat us. We are invincible. When the enemy fights us, we can fight confidently and say what Cap always said, I can do this all day. But unfortunately, too many of God's children don't read God's word. Instead of being a stud like Captain America, they are instead weak-kneed Barney Fife from the Andy Griffith Show, running around with one bullet in their pocket and losing the fight before it even starts. Guys, that's why we create our year-long Bible reading plans for men. This year, our 2022 Bible plan is themed Ride or Die. It contains daily Bible reading passages and a weekly devotional. In 2022, the devotionals are being written not just by me, but my friends and ministry partners who also believe the need for God's men to read the Word. In 2022, you can get an email to you daily for free. It costs you nothing. Or if you want, you can buy a print copy to have a physical copy of the plan. More information is available at mantorministries.com slash Bible plan. Check it out. Take advantage of this plan at mantorministries.com slash Bible plan. But guys, Christian men must read God's word. It's how we gain the power to win against the enemy's attacks. This is something Jesus knew and understood. He fought the temptations of Satan by quoting the word of God to defeat him. The enemy can't fight against truth. And God's word is absolute truth. It exposes the enemy, the enemy for what he is, the father of lies. It exposes the enemy for what he really is, the father of lies. To be a strong man of God, you must read God's word. However, that's not enough. Reading the Bible isn't enough. We need to move on here to point number two, and that is godly men are convicted by God's word. Let me say that again. Godly men don't just read the word, but they are convicted by God's word. Josiah was heartbroken when he heard the words of the book of the law. He immediately recognized that his nation had disobeyed everything that had just been read to him. Hearing God's word, it just it wrecked him. He was brought to tears and he tore his robe, seeing how far God's people were living from God's ways. Josiah immediately recognized the entire nation had sinned against God. They had ceased to follow and obey God's word. Immediately, he was convicted for the sins he and Judah had committed against God. Guys, we need to allow the Word of God to convict us. The Bible is God's holy Word, and we are unholy, sinful men. So every time we read the Word, it should help us see areas of, in our life where we can make changes. This light should show us areas we need to change, things we need to repent of. Repentance should always be a result of reading God's Word, and this allows God's Word to change us and make us more like Jesus. And as a result, we, can, we should make changes to our lives 
And that's going to bring us to point three. And we're going to look at point three right after the break. I know you're going to dig this. Like what you're hearing? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Thanks. Gentlemen, start your engine. The 2022 Ignition Man Tours are coming up fast. You need to plan to be at your local mantra conference as we ask the important question, will you ride or die with God? Featuring manly worship, challenging messages, and a chance to respond to God's challenge, the Ignition Mantra Conference is the shot in the arm that you and your church's men need. For conference dates, locations, and speaker information, visit mantorministries.com today. Make sure you're at your 2022 local mantor conference and bring as many men with you as possible. We'll see you there. For mantor conference dates and locations, visit mantorministries.com. Yep, you're listening to the Mantor, mantor Guy podcast. podcast. Will you be a ride or die man of God? This is the challenge contained in the pages of our new book for men. Ride or Die examines the lives of 10 men who set an amazing example of extreme loyalty to God. No matter what he asked or what circumstances they faced, they always fist pumped and said, let's do this, I'll ride or die with you. Each chapter challenges us to follow in their footsteps and accept the call to be men who are wholeheartedly devoted to God. Filled with practical applications for today's culture, this book will inspire you to say, I'll ride or die with God. Order your copy today at MantorMinistries.com. Don't forget to visit iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Thanks. Pornography is affecting millions of men, including Christians. Have you seen the effects of porn on your church? Perhaps you feel at a loss when facing the destructive force of pornography. Covenant Eyes is here to help. We created Strive, an anonymous 21-day porn detox for men. Strive will educate and equip men with powerful weapons for this battle. Contact our team today and see how Covenant Eyes and Strive can equip the men in your church to defeat pornography for good. Mentor Guy Podcast, helping men grow in their walk with God. Will you ride or die with God's Word? Join the ride to take part in this year-long Bible reading plan designed to help you become a strong, on-fire, ride-or-die man of God. The 365-day ride-or-die Bible plan features 52 devotionals from pastors, speakers, and men's leaders, six days of Bible reading, and a devotional on the seventh day. It has relevant topics for men to aid in your spiritual growth. It also features a verse of the day and hand-selected Bible passages to keep you engaged all year long. This year, you can join the Ride or Die Bible Plan two ways. You can receive it for free via email beginning January 1st, 2022, or for the first time ever, we have made our year-long Bible plan available in a paperback version that you can purchase to have a physical copy. To join this Bible plan, visit mantorministries.com slash Bible plan. Guys, take advantage of this year-long Bible reading plan, become a part of it, and become a man of the Word. Order your copy today at mantorministries.com. Welcome back to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Welcome back, guys. We'll continue to look at the story of Josiah and learn how we can become men who ride or die with God's Word. So far, we have seen that men of God need to daily read God's Word and that they need to allow what they read to convict them. Now let's look at what we do after we face the Holy Spirit's conviction as we look at point three. And number three is, a ride-or-die man of God takes action after reading God's Word. Josiah was devastated after he heard God's Word. He knew they had sinned against God, and he knew action needed to be taken. So he sent for the prophetess who basically said, I'm sorry, but it's too late. God's going to judge his people for their sins. But the good news is it's not going to happen during your lifetime. Now at this point, Josiah could have done a few things. He could have seen the situation as hopeless and thought, nothing I can do about this. He could have taken a deep breath and said, wow, at least it won't happen to me. But instead, he decided to ride or die with God's word. Josiah rolled up his sleeves and got to work getting rid of all idols and every single thing associated with idol worship in his kingdom. 
He became extreme, getting rid of every single thing that was against God's laws. He destroyed all the altars to false gods that had been built inside of God's temple. I mean, you can believe that? They brazenly built idols to false gods in the temple. Josiah got rid of them. He removed all of the Ashtoreth poles that had been erected by Solomon generations ago. He got rid of the homosexual prostitutes that were in the temple of God. Again, how did that ever happen? He destroyed all the sexual worship taking place. He demolished the high places that built the fake idols. He destroyed every foreign idol in Judah. He destroyed all the high places in Samaria. He killed all the priests who were serving at these high places. And he got rid of all the mediums, the spiritists, the witches, and the warlocks, the household gods, and all the idols and detestable things that he found in Judah and Jerusalem. Josiah didn't just fall a little. No, he was an extreme in his obedience to God's word. Why? Because he knew that up until then, his people were extreme in their disobedience. And he had to take action. He got God's temple back in shape and re he reinstituted the proper practices of worshiping God that had been abandoned long ago. He let the people and celebrated Passover and did all that he could to get the people back on track. Josiah was a true ride-or-die man of God's word. He read it, he repented, and he moved forward in obedience. 2 Kings 23 verse 25 describes him this way. Neither before nor after Josiah was there a king like him who turned to God as he did, with all his heart and with all of his soul and with all of his strength in accordance with the law of Moses, or which in his day was the word of God. King Josiah set an example that many of us need to follow as we commit to being ride-or-die men of God. I remember a time in my life where we had to have Josiah Day in our lives. I had a grandfather who, for lack of a better term, was a thief. I don't think there was any gift that he ever gave to me that wasn't stolen. He stole so much stuff from his place of work. And being completely honest, we never really realized that most of what he gave us was stolen. But then one Sunday, we heard a sermon on this very passage we're discussing today. And as a family, we realized we needed to clean house and get rid of everything that he had ever given us so that we were not holding on to stolen goods. We searched every room, every closet, every corner of the basement and found everything he had given us. There was so much stolen stuff that we had to get two dumpsters to get rid of it all. But God's word convicted us as a family and we took extreme action and we cleansed our house. I remember another time where the Holy Spirit convicted me for how much of an idol I'd made of the game of golf. Because of my disability, golf was the only sport I was ever really to play, able to really play really well. And as a result, I made golf too much of an idol in my life. In order to get victory, I went extreme and threw away everything I had that related to golf. It was hard, but God's conviction showed me I had to take action. There have been times when God's word convicted me of TV shows I was watching, friendships I was entertaining, books I was reading, and so much more. I had to get rid of them from my life immediately. Guys, it's time for every one of us to go through our lives and through our hearts and maybe even through our houses and get rid of everything that doesn't please God. It's time for us to stop saying, well, you know, everyone else is doing it. No one else really has a problem with it. We need to stop making excuses for our sin and our compromise and go to extremes in passionate obedience to God. It's time to get rid of books, magazines, internet sites, television shows, hobbies, habits, or anything else that is displeasing to God. You need to abandon anything that is connected with the occult, magic, witchcraft, yoga, or any foreign religion. It's time we stop playing around with pornography and say, once and for all, it's out of here. It could be alcohol or an especially violent video game. Really, the possibilities are endless of sinful things that Christians entertain that should be abolished from their lives. It's time to go all Josiah on these things and get them out of our lives once and for all. And then we need to commit to ride or die, implementing true spiritual discipline into our lives. Men, we need a fresh commitment to prayer, Bible reading, and Bible study. It's time to ride or die with God's word. The Mantor Guy's final thought. Guys, as we wrap up today, I want you to know that I'm talking to myself as much as I am to you today. 
God has personally been speaking to me recently that I need to be spending more time reading and studying His Word. Now, I read the Bible every day, but I'm feeling a call inside to go even deeper. One change I'm making is that I'm switching from reading the Bible on my phone and going back to a hard copy physical Bible. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with using your phone to read the Bible. There's absolutely nothing wrong with reading the Bible digitally. I've been doing it for years. But I personally find myself getting distracted by notifications on my phone. I'll be reading the Bible and get an email notification, or an update about my Broncos, or my fantasy football team, or the Wendy's app will flash up telling me the daily deals. So personally, I decided to go back to holding a Bible in my hand and reading a hard copy Bible. I also decided to invest in a new Bible. My old Bible I've had for 20 or 30 years has so many underlines and notes in it. I decided to read through fresh eyes and hope for fresh revelations as I read God's Word. This is a choice I've made to help myself become even more of a man of the Word who not only reads the Word, but allows the Bible to convict me and cause me to make changes in my life. Now that's my choice. It's time for you to make your choice. It's time to make a ride-or-die commitment to become a man of the Word. If we're to be true ride-or-die men of God, we can't just read God's Word. We have to allow it to convict us, and then we need to act in this conviction and make changes. Men, it's time to allow God's Word to have a life-changing impact on your life. Like Josiah, our entire legacy can become one of being a ride-or-die man of God. and I can't think of a better legacy for any man of God to have. Well, guys, we are out of time for this week's podcast. As we wrap up today, I want to thank you for giving me your time today to listen. Guys, we are just weeks away from the start of our 2022 Ignition Will You Ride or Die with God Mantor Conferences. We have seven locations. Make sure you make it to your local Mantor Conference. Guys, be there. You're going to be blessed. God is going to speak to you, and you're going to come out of there on fire, ready to ride or die with God, no matter what. Also, we would love it if you took a second and shared this podcast to your social media accounts. We'd love to be able to reach even more men and help them grow in their walk with God. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a five-star rating, and leave a review wherever you get your podcasts. That helps us reach even more men and help them grow in their walk with God. Also, one last thing, do not forget to visit MantorMinistries.com. You can learn more about our conferences there. All of our dates, our speakers, our location, everything you need about the conferences at MantorMinistries.com. You can learn more about our Bible plan, about our newest resource, Ride or Die. You can find out about all of our books and resources, and you can read the first chapter of most of them for free at MantorMinistries.com. But guys, once again, I want to thank you for joining us this week. We'll see you next week on the Mantor Guy Podcast. Dive into God's Word, guys. Thanks for listening to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Be sure to visit MantorMinistries.com to learn more about our books, men's ministry resources, and our Mantor Conferences. Hey guys, Mantor Guy Jamie Holden here. Are you looking for a speaker at your church or for your men's breakfast, your next men's event, men's retreat, or men's conference? Well, why not bring me in to speak? God has been moving among men as I've been sharing an encouraging word of freedom and victory. We're seeing lives change, men being saved, people being set free, and guys, chains are being broken. So if your church has hurting men and women, contact me to come share this encouraging word of hope and victory to help you grow in your walk with God. Men of God, we can't keep burning daylight. It's time to rise and shine. Mantor Ministry presents Burning Daylight, the Godly Man's Call to Rise and Shine. This is the most important book we've released yet as we give a rallying cry to God's men to throw off all complacency and rise and shine. This book is designed to help you know what you believe, why you believe it, and how to recognize the false teaching of progressive Christianity so you don't fall into its trap. It's time we rise from our beds and shine bright to a dark world. Order your copy today at mantorministries.com slash burning daylight. No more burning daylight, men. It's time to rise and shine. The Mantor Guy Podcast, helping men grow in their walk with God.